Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, I'm excited to do an unboxing of Fallen Land, a post-apocalyptic board game. This is the second edition, and if you're wondering about this box, it is pretty darn huge. We have it, it's like 15 inches. This is not a, this is not a 12 inch ruler, it's a 15 inch ruler. So we have got, we are talking 15 inches by 10 inches, less about six inches deep. So this is a, this is a massive, massive box. If you remember on the channel several years ago, did an unboxing of Fallen Land and one of the expansions, Journey into Darkness, this includes the expansion. So before those were sold separately, this second edition, revamped, repackaged, includes both expansions, the Journey into Darkness and the Outriders Trading Post. It is for one to six players. It plays about an hour per player and it is solo friendly, which is pretty awesome. I think there's two uh, different solo modes in this one. So I'm very excited to see what they've changed here. It's been several years. So if you look at the, um, you'll be able to see how those were, how those looked, and now we're gonna see how the new version looks, if I can get it open. So let's crack it open, see what you get inside. All right, well, let's see what we can do here. Like I said, it's a pretty deep box, so let's see if we can get it off. There we go, the vacuum broken. Wow, okay, this is super deluxe. It's got like trays and everything else. So the first thing we get is a bag with all the documentation in it. Wow, there's a lot of stuff in here. All right, we'll go through this first. Keep that away from kids, so don't suffocate. First player sheet. So you get the first thing we get is a first player sheet. Wow. First player sheet is a very thick cardstock sheet. And it just outlines the effects phase, the town business phase, the exploits phase, the party exploits phase, and the intern phase. The first player is the chairperson of the council of towns. They announce the opening of each phase and go first. Uh, phase is over when all players have had the opportunity to act and pass. It's sub phases. So. Apparently there's a way you, I guess, the first player can change. It doesn't necessarily say that it, uh, nope. It passes the player on the left becomes the first player, first mayor. All right, so now we've got the quick start guide, which I think is something new. This is a full color, it's about eight pages maybe. Oh, yeah, eight pages. Quick start, it is full color. Like I said, it's on a glossy stock. I do like that it's, standard paper size, eight and a half by 11. It's not massively huge to, uh, just because they could. They just were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. So you see the uh, custom artwork, which is, which is, uh, memory serves, is on every card. Uh, it's very cool. So it just gives you the quick start guide. Game setup, number of players, town play mat, Character cards, spoils cards, tells you the different types of cards. And there's lots of different decks, kind of similar to, I mean, the game is not similar to, but the multiple decks kind of similar to uh, Firefly, if you ever played that, where it's like, we go over here and get these cards, we go over here and get these, you know, we're over here on this planet, so we gotta draw from that deck kind of thing. So, order of play. So, that's just a quick dive right in. Solo. Solo player versus player. That's interesting. How do you have solo player versus player? You must really dislike yourself. Then we have the Fallen Land post-apocalyptic board game scenario book. Got some more artwork there. Got a, got a crew of ladies from a tank that have taken out a bad guy. This one is... 24 pages and it contains, let's take a look here. It has, wow, has lots of scenarios, lots of different scenarios. So let's take a look. We've got competitive scenarios. 
which is for one to seven players. So again, I'm kind of confused how you can have competitive with only one to seven players, but I'm sure if you read it, you'll find out. Then we've got Trailblazers. So we have three competitive scenarios. It looks like we got eight cooperative scenarios. We've got five solo scenarios, uh, three alternate setups, three no map scenarios. That's pretty cool. Uh, two campaigns and eight variants and solar rules which are on the back so take a look here wrecking ball one it's a run it says uh, one to seven players competitive 30 minutes per player if a party or non-player character mercenary ends their movement on the finish line okay so there's non-player character mercenaries so that's how you get around player versus player and solo as well as competitive scenarios so that's pretty neat so each scenario tells you how to set it up obviously any rule adjustments very cool. And then we've got solo first player sheet. Solo game is set up identical to regular setup with a few changes highlighted in red. And it goes through those there and the solo rules adjustments. Very cool. Even adjustments to an auction phase. Draw three spoils cards, place them face up. These may be purchased for their salvage coin value. Discard the rest. And then you get to continue being the first player when you're the only player. Pass it to the player on your left. You've got issues. All right, and then we've got the whole full rule book. This is the second edition rule book. Again, some nice artwork. This is what's on the cover. I'm excited about this one. I was ready to play the old version, and then I found out this one was coming out, and I was just very excited. So this is 44 pages rule book, full color, glossy stock. I'm gonna go through all the meat and potatoes of how to play this game. And I'm very excited about playing this one. Welcome to the second edition. So why second edition? I was wondering what the differences were. Let's see, we've made the game even better by digitally remastering and editing all the original content. We've added new factions, cards, minis, and new solo to, s new solo to six player content. These, features cooper these feature cooperative and competitive scenarios, variants, and two campaigns. There's also a ton of new artwork, minor rule changes. Component organization was also at the forefront with new chip trays that reduce setup and tear down time and the footprint of the game on the table. Finally, we've had the two first edition expansions into the big box second edition. Very nice, good job, Sean Cahill, John Longren. All right, so that's the massive rule book there. Now, like we said, like I said, we've got trays. Trays have lids. So here's gonna be one I think is probably for the factions because there's 12 slots to hold the faction tokens. They are, uh, What's the word? Injection molded. And they have lids that do lock. So it's hard to see the black. But it does have a full size lid. It does have a little locking tab on it. So it'll keep it in play. So we've got one for that. And then we've got this one here. Looks like it holds some chips and larger markers. Uh, we've got about 12 slots for those two. 10, 10 slots, 11 slots five and six and some small slots here again with the locking lid so as you punch it you just put it on here and then we've got a stack of these it's like four organization trays got six compartments each they're stacking so they're obviously all four the same and four matching lids very nice and then you can't get away from it we have baggies you're gonna need some baggies too most likely i hope you if you like the sleeve cards there's a lot of cards here so i'm gonna put some of this to the side Woo, i'm excited about this one all right what do we got what do we do first we got dice there are dice for each player so we got two of each color so the blue player has two the orange player has two, the red player has two, the green player has two, the black player has two, the yellow player has two. And I'm gonna roll these to face off like we usually do. I do like that they have the little nuclear symbol, which I assume is on the 10. Let's see, yeah, it's on the 10. Let's see a little nuclear bomb going off. All right, so those are the player dice and then we have 
game dice. You can leave these in the pack. We got one 12 sided orange die in there. And then we've got six six sided black dice. And then we've got, these are in a band. So these are the different factions that you can play. All right, so we have the Coalition of the Black Angel, starting in Iowa City, Iowa. We have the Enclave of Terra, starting location Great Falls, Montana. Syndicate, starting location Battle Mountain, Nevada. Swamp Runners from Shreveport, Louisiana. New Federalists of Albany, Georgia, Albany. The Regulators coming out of Amarillo, Texas. They're yellow. The Highwaymen out of Sturgis, South Dakota. Got their motorcycles, obviously. We got the Brotherhood out of St. George, Utah. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Sons of Neptune out of Grand Haven, Michigan. Sigma Corporation out of Emporium, Pennsylvania. Los Intermediarios out of Jimenez, Coahuila, Coahuila. The Preservationists out of Thunder Bay, Ontario. That's it, that's number 12. Got through them all. All right, so these are your faction boards. Obviously you got your movement bonuses, your resources, your town roster will go off to the side, and characters in your auction house go there. And I am seeing for these markers, it looks like we've got kind of borrowed the idea from uh, Zombicide, where you got these nice little, these are much nicer paperclip type gadgets that will ride along the board, I think. So that's pretty nice. And then we've got our faction miniatures right here. And these are definitely, these are definitely different from the first volume. Here we've got a eagle head. And then we've got a owl. And it's probably the Sturgis one. It's a wheel with wings on it. And we've got a howling wolf. So these are cool because these are your markers that are going to move around the board to represent your party. So it's nice that they have them there. And I'm sure the painter and a lot of you are going to go through and paint these. We've got a flag. That's probably the Texas one. It's got the Lone Star on it. And then we've got something here. Looks like oh, those are the Bayou one because it's got whiskey and an alligator head on it. I'm just guessing, but I'm pretty sure that's what these are going to be. And then we've got an angel. One wing up, one wing down. Some cross pistols. A trident. A fist coming out of the ground. And then we've got a couple of crossed knives here it looks like and then three wheels with some arrows going through the center of them Ooh, have I mentioned I'm excited about playing this one and then we've got skull and crossbones inside of a spade so those are your 12 faction tokens all right and then we've got the game board we'll open up and take a look at in a little bit and then we've got bunches and bunches of cards. So I'm going to try to just show some of these without actually opening them all because there's no way we could go through all of these cards. All right, so one of the cool things here is it does appear that they've pre-separated them into decks. So here's the characters' decks here. I'll just look at the ones that they reveal to us. It looks like we got some, a couple of the decks have instructions, uh, you know, uh, events that are going to happen, a dark tunnel. I won't spoil any of this for you. Natural disasters. And then here's some actual characters. So we've got Addison Morley, a veteran park ranger. He can be part of your crew. Or John Lundgren. Hey, we've heard that name somewhere before. A leader of a secret organization and game design company. Pretty cool. All right, so that's that's what the characters are gonna look like. And then we've got you know different things that are gonna happen in zones. So you've got like here's the planes decks. So we have two decks of city ra uh, radiation area decks and two for planes. Um, 
Well, we're gonna go ahead and open one just to see if they have, I seem to recall the other one had more disparity in the decks, but maybe I was misremembering. No, these are all planes. So we'll just pick one at random. If it's not an event, it's an event. Do, 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 do. These are all events. I don't want to spoil anything. So I'll just kind of cover it. But So you come across a former Indian reservation set beside a large granite cliff and running parallel to a small stream. This Native American village is masterfully carved out of a bleak desert landscape. So a lot of text on these, a lot of art. Um, so like here's one. This is a Holy Avenger. Uh, it's like a uh, something you can equip right it's got a little chart next to it all right so those are that was the planes deck and then we've got the city radiation area decks again so like in the planes you're not going to have a pharmacy but in the city area you may have a pharmacy that you can loot and then you test various things and there's success or failure again i don't want to spoil anything so you got a couple of decks of those that go together and then we've got Four decks of spoils, things you can auction for, search for. So like here we've got a militia rifle, ranged weapon assault rifle, and it's defense, you know, attack defense value, or attack values, obviously no defense on that. And then cache of combat fatigues, equip to all party characters or to none. So you gotta give it to everybody or to nobody. And then we've got a 45 semi-automatic pistol is a ranged weapon and a handgun and then we've got a flare gun so that's just you know what's showing on those four decks all right then we've got action cards which will again be encounters and things you can do a city gone mad um, a much better offer play during the party exploits phase and then uh, pay twice their hiring costs for non for hired mercenaries. Uh, pay twice their hiring costs to immediately gain control of them at their current location. So it's something you can play for an action. And we've got a Reaver Witch Doctor. So you put the lime in the coconut. And then uh, Dash to Freedom. Just various different things. Influenza Outbreak, it's just events. I mean, there's just so many cards. NASA command control module, optional and attempted. So that's pretty cool. You got all those different things that can happen. Well, there's a lot of stuff in here. And then we've got our punch boards. Open them up, take a look at those. All right, so we got one sheet here, two sheets. These different improvements I believe you can make to your base. Communication centers, energy production, garrisons. Uh, I believe there's six of each, for each one communication. Yeah, there's rows of six. So uh, they'll go like this. I mean, you can just punch them all out and you put them in that tray we saw, those chips, all right? So, medical center, water and supplies, machine shop, these are ways you can improve your base. So you get two sheets of those, then we've got five sheets of just counters, obviously some wounds here, TDs, and then we've got uh, obviously some radiation, some mind control, Medical supplies, fuel supplies, multipliers. Uh, another sheet of faction counters. And these end up, you know, matching the the uh, pawns that we saw earlier. So there's the angel, the trident, the revolvers, the little bang, howling wolf, various non-player. Groups, markers. And then we've got some ammo. Ones, threes, five different denominations. Fuel. Medical supplies. And then another sheet of counters along with submission tokens. And points of interest. Here. And they're all clearly marked, so I guess you're going to just say this is point of interest one, point of interest two. You're not randomly placing them around trying to find them. Some more radiation markers, some more TV markers, and the other factions. So, so we have four factions here one, two, three, four, five, six factions, seven, eight. So we've got all 12 here, so the TV markers or something else. 
that shield made me think they were a faction and they were not. All right, let's see if we can take a look at this board, this game map real quick. All right, so this is the, this is the board. Uh, this is only a six panel map. Uh, you can see it covers uh, most a lot of North America. It's obviously going to be most of the United, mostly United States. But we do have areas up here in Canada, some of Mexico as well. Uh, it's probably about nine inches. Let's see, nine inches square. Yeah, nine. Yeah, each panel is about nine by nine, so that makes it an eighteen by twenty-seven inch map. Not a lot of table space for it to take up because you obviously got to each player's got to have their. Uh, faction uh, area set up with all their characters and um, uh, equipment so on and so forth so anyway you can see the different starting locations uh, they don't have the cities marked but they do have the starting locations and it tells you on the faction map where those cities are or what those cities are and then we've got all these of these numbered areas points of interest that you're going to travel to and from so uh, it's got a map key here, uh, starting town locations and these resources uh, and how much movement it takes. Uh, these are random locations, so you roll a dice and see where something random happens. Uh, plains hex, this is a plain area, then you got mountain hexes, um, cities, so you get the city areas and then we have the irradiated areas I believe here, yeah, where it's glowing, that's where the nukes hit. Uh, the radiation's still bad. So the multiple terrain hexes. Um, there's a few you can see here. Like this is mountain and radiation, for example. And then water, which is impassable. So unless otherwise directed. So there may be options to do there. Uh, and then we do have score score tracking here. Here is your prestige track, and this is your town health track that goes this way around the board. So. Very, very cool. I don't know how this differs from the original in terms of artwork. It looks really cool right now. Um, uh, I believe the win here uh, is this way. I'm not sure the win is this way, but maybe, oh no, maybe it is. Because you have a short game, ends at 10 prestige and 50 town health. So it's about halfway. So I guess you can win there. Anyway, very, very cool. Well, this is halfway. 50 is. 80 would be the win there so anyway very cool like it like it a lot so let's put this away and recap everything that you have in that big box it's a lot of stuff all right so if you pick up a copy and i think you should based on my play of the first version of fallen land a post-apocalyptic board game second edition you're going to get that mounted board we just took a look at you're gonna get those six sheets of round, pre-rounded <laughs> counters. You're gonna get the, the two sheets of the facility improvements, faction status boards, along with faction histories on the back of each one. We didn't, didn't look at that. You're going to get, I'm gonna put these to the side. You get the 12 pawns, one for each of the factions. We're gonna get the decks of cards. So we got, uh, we got six action decks. We've got three for the planes areas. We got four for spoils. We got four for character and two for city and irradiated areas. All right, we got a pack of paperclip like markers to mark on the faction boards. We've got the faction dice, two uh, for the player dice, there's two for each player um, in the player color. These players can only play one faction. Then we've got the six dice plus the orange 12-sided die. We have organization trays, number one, a bag of bags, four organization trays for the various counters in the game and markers. Got all this in here somewhere. The other the faction uh, facility improvement marker holder. 
and got the big 44 page second edition rule book the scenario book the quick start book and the first player reference chart and a bag to keep away from small children and that is everything whew, that's in this massive massive box fallen land a post-apocalyptic board game second edition from Fallen Dominion Games. This is pretty cool. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye bye. Oh!